I'm Wangui McKelvey, General Manager for Microsoft 365. I'm thrilled to be back at Microsoft Ignite so I can share with you how we're making things easier and more secure with Windows 11, Windows 365, and Microsoft Intune so you can focus on what matters most to your employees, productivity, collaboration, and a great user experience. First things first, Windows 11 version 22H2 is now available. It includes critical new features that help keep your organization safe in an ever-changing threat landscape. It also has many new helpful tools and enhancements based on your feedback to give IT the flexibility they crave and the control you need. Easy provisioning, enhanced phishing protection, advanced monitoring and reporting. We'll hit on all of these in a moment. But first, a few important announcements on what's new in Windows. Coming in Q1 of 2023, Windows Auto Patch, our new service that automatically keeps Windows, Microsoft 365, Teams, and Edge up to date, will support Windows 10 customers as they move to Windows 11. You heard me right. Soon enough, with Auto Patch, you'll be able to leave the move from Windows 10 to Windows 11 to us. We will take a closer look at what's new in Auto Patch later in this session. It's been a little more than a year since Windows 365 came to market. And what a year of big moments and new product innovations. We've seen a great response so far and have already released many new features to meet your needs. For example, today you can save valuable hours by easily provisioning one or hundreds or even thousands of cloud PCs together. I'm also excited to share that Windows 365, your Windows in the Cloud, keeps expanding to meet your workplace needs and job roles. Windows 365 government is now generally available for government community cloud and government community cloud high organizations in the United States. And coming soon, organizations will be able to provision Windows 365 cloud PCs for shift or part-time employees that only need a cloud PC for a limited time. But I know what keeps you up at night? Security, which is why Windows 11 is built to protect against today's threats and the threat landscape of the future. Our OEM partners have done a phenomenal job ensuring that new Windows 11 PCs are secure at each layer of computing, from chip to cloud. They offer a wide variety of form factors and price points with secure cord PCs that provide security out of the box, integrating hardware, firmware, software, and identity protection. Secure cord PCs come with all the advanced security features of Windows 11 enabled, and it is the combination of hardware and OS-based security backed by threat intelligence from the cloud that protects you from physical attacks as well as phishing, malware, and other threats. We recently unveiled a new lineup of Surface devices, offering you greater flexibility and new options for the evolving hybrid workplace, with security built in right from the start. We've improved security at the hardware level by bringing Microsoft Pluton technology to our latest Surface Pro 9 to protect credentials, user identities, encryption keys, and personal data. With UEFI on select Surface devices, we've also expanded secure core PCs offerings and firmware innovations. A new PC can help you stay more secure and help your employees be more productive. And with so many choices from Surface and OEMs like HP, Lenovo, and Dell, there is a new Windows 11 device that is right for everyone. I also have exciting news to share about Windows in the Cloud and Cloud Endpoint Management. Moving forward, Microsoft Intune will be our flagship cloud-based unified endpoint management brand from Microsoft. We're simplifying our branding to reflect the momentum we're seeing from organizations who have accelerated their move to the cloud. From configuration manager to co-management or full cloud management in Intune. Configuration Manager will remain a foundational part of our endpoint management family, and we will continue to meet you where you are with capabilities that help you drive more workloads to the cloud, including 
app management. Speaking of apps, Microsoft is making it easier for you to discover, acquire, and deploy applications to your employees through the new integration between Intune and the Microsoft Store on Windows. To give IT more control over the application supply chain, we've connected the Microsoft Store on Windows to your organization repositories. Not only does this simplify the delivery of internal applications and help you manage the acquisition and use of approved apps, it offers a familiar app store experience for Windows users that you will love. In future releases of Intune, we plan to expand on this integration, adding support for app patching and version control to further move you toward a unified, easy approach to managing all your Windows applications. As an example, just as Satya shared earlier, the Windows 365 app is now available in public preview in the Microsoft Store on Windows. Now, you can access your cloud PC from the taskbar or start menu and enjoy a full seamless Windows 11 experience, whether you're working on a local desktop or cloud PC. The Windows 365 app delivers high-performing, reliable experiences for Microsoft Teams and your other Microsoft 365 apps. Now, I know what you really want is to see the latest capabilities that will help you easily configure and manage frictionless, flexible, and secure experience and boost productivity and collaboration. So let's head over to the demo lab with my friend and colleague, Steve Dispenza. Thanks, Wangui. Hello, Ignite. I'm Steve Dispenza, VP of Product for Windows and Intune. Today, I'm going to demo some of the latest capabilities that simplify security and device management so you can deploy Windows 11 with confidence using the familiar power of Intune and the flexibility of Windows 365 cloud PCs. With Windows 11, we've made significant strides in creating chip-to-cloud zero-trust security out of the box. For example, with 22H2, we're expanding the number of devices that will have security features enabled by default and turning on Microsoft Defender Credential Guard out of the box. We're also looking to help prevent employees from running malicious applications with smart app control. And one feature I am excited about is our enhanced phishing protection with Microsoft Defender Smart Screen. Credential phishing is the top security problem that companies face today, with industry data showing that stolen credentials are top attack vectors in breaches. Let me show you what Windows 11 version 22H2 is doing to help corporate passwords stay safe while you're on your journey to a fully passwordless future. Windows 11 detects when you type your Microsoft account password into any app or site and understands whether it has a secure connection to a trusted website. If not, Windows will let you know if you're in danger. For the first time, you have the ability to know the moment your password has been stolen, and you can protect yourself before that password is used against you. Let me show you. Let's say I'm a small business owner who works with Woodgrove Bank for payroll. To make sure this is Woodgrove's real site, I would normally look to the address bar, but let's say I didn't know to check the domain and I proceed with trying to sign in. What's this? I see that enhanced phishing protection warns me in real time when I type in the password that I use to sign in to my Windows 11 device. Without this feature, someone could select submit and share their corporate password on a phishing site without thinking twice. Once Windows 11 protects against one phishing attack, that intelligence then protects other Windows users interacting with various apps and sites. Enhanced phishing protection helps people decipher what's legitimate and what's not. It also does two important things. First, it lets me know right in the moment that I need to change my password to reduce further damage. Second, it automatically reports the attack to IT. From an IT perspective, I can view the phishing alert in the Microsoft Defender for Endpoint portal under Incidents and Alerts. Enhanced phishing protection can also promote safer password behavior. As an IT admin, you can customize which notifications appear to end users through Intune policies. For example, here in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center, select Devices, then Configuration Profiles, 
and create a profile for Windows 10 and later. To enable this feature, select Settings Catalog and scroll down to Smart Screen, look for the subfolder for Enhanced Phishing Protection, and turn on the ability to show warnings for password reuse and unsafe password storage. We know that password reuse is common because strong passwords can be hard to remember. What if I try to reuse my corporate password from the same work device to sign my child up for an after-school program because I don't want to remember a new password? Well, you'll see that I'm issued a warning to use unique passwords to keep my information safe. For people that like to store their passwords in Notepad or Microsoft 365 apps like Word, Enhanced Phishing Protection warns that this is an unsafe practice. Behind the scenes, Windows analyzes apps and sites where password entry occurs. When Enhanced Phishing Protection sees signals indicating potential compromise, it jumps into action. I'm now going to take you through a quick demo of remote help, including some new features we shipped since we launched this past April. If you're unfamiliar, remote help gives IT administrators a new option to deploy an enterprise-ready remote assistance solution for Windows, tightly integrated with Microsoft 365 and Microsoft Intune. Now, let's walk through an end-to-end -end scenario and see how this works. In this scenario, I'm having issues playing an audio file. Daniela from Comtoso's help desk will use remote help to troubleshoot and fix the issue with my audio. After Daniela and I launch remote help and sign in with our Azure AD credentials, Daniela clicks to get a one-time security code and then shares it with me over the phone. After entering the security code and clicking submit, Daniela is shown a prompt giving her the option to request full control or screen share over my device. Both Daniela and I are shown critical information from Azure AD about each other before entering the session. I now have an active remote desktop session with Daniela. The first thing Daniela notices is a prompt indicating that my device is non-compliant with our organization's Intune policies. She sees a hyperlink and clicks to get more information. This is a new feature, making it easier for Daniela to quickly assess the reasons for device non-compliance and ensure there's no security vulnerability before proceeding. She sees summary details for the device in the Endpoint Manager Administrator Center and feels comfortable moving forward to fix my audio issues. Next, Daniela determines that Media Player needs to be re-enabled. She can do this from PowerShell, but needs to enter her local administrator credentials on my device. Daniela clicks the Just-in-Time Elevation button, another new feature, and launches PowerShell as an administrator. She sees the User Account Control prompt and enters her local administrator credentials. After re-enabling Media Player, Daniela runs a quick check to confirm that device audio is working and an audio file can be played. Help Desk being able to hear audio from a sharer's device is another new feature. Daniela ends the session and I can now successfully play audio. As you can see, remote help allows IT admins to provide remote assistance easily and securely to users wherever they are. We have a lot more features coming to make things even easier, so stay tuned. Upgrading to Windows 11 enables you to take advantage of the latest, most advanced security protections from chip to cloud. And seeing which devices in your estate you can upgrade to Windows 11 or update to Windows 11 version 22H2 is easy with Intune. If you're planning a Windows upgrade or update, you may have questions about the compatibility of your apps and drivers. Our compatibility promise has been extended to Windows 11, and the AppAssure program guarantees that apps that work on Windows 10 will continue to work on Windows 11. But we understand that some organizations want proactive data about compatibility risks to be confident that the specific apps and drivers they use will not cause any issues. New reports in Intune provide the insights you need to assess compatibility within your organization, allowing you to upgrade or update Windows with confidence. Let's take a look.
We're in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center here under Reports. If I click over to Windows Updates and then select the Reports tab, you'll notice two new reports related to compatibility, the Windows Feature Update Device Readiness Report and the Windows Feature Update Compatibility Risks Report. Let's take a look at the Device Readiness Report. The first thing I'll need to do is select which version of Windows I'm planning to deploy. Choose carefully, the insights generated by the report will be tailored specifically to the feature update you select. I'm going to upgrade to Windows 11, so I'll click here. Next, I can see which devices I'd like to assess using scope tags. I want to see all my devices, so I'll use the default scope tag here. Then I click Generate Report, and my devices will be assessed for known compatibility issues across apps, drivers, and system requirements. Once the report is generated, I can see a device-by-device -device breakdown of update readiness status. I see system requirement issues as well as potential risks related to apps and drivers. If a device is identified as having an app issue, for example, I can click in to open a flyout. I'll get more information about the device. I can see here that this device has a system requirement gap related to the processor family, as well as an application compatibility risk. If I click over to the Applications tab, I can see specific information about the app in question. Jumping back out to the Reports page here, let's jump into Compatibility Risks. This report aggregates known issues across all my devices to help me identify the ones with the greatest impact in my organization. Again, I'll need to select which version of Windows I'd like to assess. I'm going to pick Windows 11 again, and then click Generate Report. Once generated, this report shows me all the compatibility risks identified in my organization. I can sort by affected devices here to see which risks are impacting the greatest number of devices. Then, if I click in, a flyout opens, showing me detailed information about the issue, including guidance when available. And if I click over the Affected Devices tab, I can see which specific devices are impacted. Assessing your devices for known compatibility issues is a great first step in preparing for a Windows upgrade or feature update. Learn more about our update readiness reports in Intune and share your feedback. Now that we have our reports, let's set some policies to control how and when our devices receive Windows 11 using Windows Update for Business. To start, I'll create an Update Ring policy to configure general update settings. I'll configure quality updates with a two-day deferral for regular monthly security updates. We'll leave feature update deferrals at zero days to take advantage of better scheduling controls in feature update policies that we'll set up next. Next, I'll change the automatic update behavior to reset to default so that I can take advantage of all the best end user update experiences like smart busy checks and intelligent active hours. And finally, I'll set the deadline policy to seven days for feature updates, three days for quality updates, and three days for a grace period before reboot. That's really all we recommend setting for a great balance of end-user experience and productivity, along with confidence that devices will stay secure. Next, I'll look at a feature update policy to get devices to the latest version of Windows 11. I'll create the policy and select Windows 11 version 22H2 as the feature update to deploy. I'll opt to make the update available gradually, so updates start over the weekend and spread out over the next few weeks. Once I have my feature update policy upgrading devices, I can check for any update errors and see what I can do to help devices get secure. To do that, I'll go to Monitoring and look at our feature update failures. There's one failure in this policy. By clicking on the alert, I can get additional details, such as a description of the cause of the error and recommended remediation. I can also get an overview of where each device in the policy is in the update process by going to Reports, Windows Updates, Reports, and the Feature Update Report. Here I can see overall progress, 
successes, errors, and in-progress devices, and see each device's status. For example, I can see the first device successfully updated, the second is in progress, and the third, that's in an offer-ready state, will start downloading when it next scans for updates. With Windows 11, upgrading and staying up to date have never been easier. Our engineers have taken all of that great Windows Update for Business technology and built upon it with Windows Auto Patch, an automated service for IT teams who would rather let Microsoft manage updating Windows and Office even on Windows 365 cloud PCs, or coming soon in Q1 of 2023, Azure Virtual Desktops. Once you enroll devices, AutoPatch assigns them automatically to the deployment rings we use to balance speed and safety in the update process. The beauty of the service is that it's pretty hands-off, but you retain control and visibility. We made it easy to move devices between rings, and if you ever need to press pause for whatever reason, well, that's easy too. We know that even as the service takes over the work of helping keep endpoints up to date, freeing your IT team's time to focus on other tasks, transparency and reporting remain important. Windows Auto Patch reporting starts with a summary view of device update status. From inside the reporting tab, you can get really granular. Review historical trends across the 90-day window for all your devices or a subset. Export the entire estate or drill down into a specific status, even break devices out by specific ring groups to run down issues. And click-through guidance for resolutions is baked into the interface, another way the service aims to make things easy. If you want a deeper look at AutoPatch, the team created a great video over at aka.ms slash autopatchignite. And of course, you can use Windows Auto Patch to manage updates for Windows 365 because you can treat a Windows 365 cloud PC exactly as you would any physical device in your estate. You can also provision and manage cloud PCs in Microsoft Intune using familiar provisioning, deployment, and management tools and processes. Let's talk more about that. Windows 365 is ready for your organization today, and we continue to evolve and extend the Windows experience with Windows 365. Deploying a cloud PC is as simple as ever, whether you need to assign and provision one cloud PC or 1,000. Let's take a look. First, I'll name my provisioning policy, then choose Join Type and Region. I'll choose Azure AD Join, which is now supported, allowing me to deploy my cloud PCs with no other requirements. Then I'll choose an image. I'll pick the Windows 11 with Microsoft 365 Apps gallery image. Next is Language Pack Selection. Windows 365 supports all the same language packs as Windows and helps orchestrate the installation. It provides an immersive experience without the need to create custom images or do other scripting or installations. Enrolling a Windows 365 device into Windows Auto Patch is a great option to minimize maintenance and update management. It's fast to provision many cloud PCs at once, since an Azure AD group can have just one employee in it or hundreds or even thousands. If I select one of the groups I've created, and let's say this group has 1,000 people in it, it takes only a few seconds after I click. And now, as you see here, my queue picks up all of these people within the group and starts provisioning cloud PCs for each of them. In about an hour, Windows 365 will create those 1,000 cloud PCs. Pretty incredible time savings. Lastly, if I want to deploy my cloud PCs into my existing network, I can. My Azure subscription has a virtual network, and I already have an express route or a site-to-site -site connection back to on-premises. Now let's take a look at the app. Let's say I'm Melissa. If my IT admin has already provisioned my cloud PC and I want to use the new Windows 365 app, I can go to the Microsoft Store on Windows to install it or use Intune. Once installed, I can launch the app from the Start menu. 
Soon, the Windows 365 app will ship Inbox as part of Windows 11, so I wouldn't even need to go to the Microsoft Store on Windows because the app will already be there. From there, the app automatically signs me in and delivers a first run experience to explain all the benefits of the application. It'll also guide me through all the options available on my cloud PC. I can also restart, restore, rename, or troubleshoot the connection without IT's help, a unique feature to the Windows 365 app. Then, to launch the Cloud PC Windows 11 session, I click on Connect, and my session starts either with Windows Hello or securely with the Azure Authenticator app, working in windowed mode or full screen mode, also unique features to the Windows 365 app. Now, I'd like to show you one of the ways we are improving the Windows experience for the people in your organization based on the feedback we've heard to date. Organizational messages enable you to deliver branded, personalized messages to your employees via native Windows 11 surfaces, like the Notification Center and the Get Started app. These messages can help people more quickly ramp up in a new role, learn more about their organization, and stay informed of important company updates or training. Let me show you how easy it is to schedule and deliver messages for new employees with Intune. Messages that will appear in the Get Started app soon after device enrollment. From the Organizational Messages tab in Intune, I can review supported areas and read more about scenarios where each type of message might be useful. Next, I'll navigate to Message to create a new message. I'll choose the Get Started app to create content for new employees. First, I'll add my custom company logo. Then, I'll pick two messages. For the first message, I configure Review Your Organization and add a custom URL so that users can access the web resource for new employees. Next, I choose Organizational Training and add the URL for the trainings. When employees click on any of the messages, they'll get redirected to the web page I've specified. Finally, I can preview in dark mode. Since these messages are intended to be used by new employees soon after onboarding, I enable the message to be always available for assigned users. Get Started app messages will show up soon after enrollment by default. I can then assign to an Azure AD group or choose all users and create the message. In the reporting view, I can monitor the status of messages, get insights on how many users have seen or interacted with the message, or easily cancel a message if I no longer need it. After a new employee provisions their new Windows 11 device and reaches the desktop, they'll see the Get Started app experience I've configured to easily find more information about the organization, reach the trainings page, or get suggestions on how to configure their new Windows 11 device. Finally, before I head out of the demo lab, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Windows Autopilot. It continues to make provisioning Windows devices easy, simple, and seamless. Well, that wraps up my demos for today. If you're looking for deep dives and opportunities to connect with our engineering teams, make sure you RSVP for the Microsoft Technical Takeoff for Windows and Intune, October 24th through the 27th on the tech community. Back to you in the studio, Wangui. Wow, thanks, Steve. Those were some impressive demos. I love them. We think you'll love the combination of new features and familiar tools powered by the cloud all helping to improve security and device management. But don't just take our word for it. Hear what your fellow IT pros are saying. I recommend all IT pros and organizations starting exploring Windows 11 today because it keeps your fleet of devices secure and all your cloud services connected to your device anytime, everywhere in the world. New threats are coming around the corner every day. So you have to make sure that you're ready for the next wave of what's coming. And the only way to do it is keep up, keep current with your operating systems and make sure that you have everything in place 
for the safe workplace whenever anything comes around. I recommend Windows 11 to administrators and stakeholders because it really is the next step uh, for any organization. It enables you to deploy the most secure operating system together with the most capable management solutions and really create a fantastic user experience and a fantastic admin experience. Keeping your data and your devices secure is one of the hardest tasks. It's one of the most important tasks and why we're here. And with Windows 11, there are a lot more integrations into those management tools, those, those security and compliance tools as well. And so we recommend upgrading to Windows 11 so that you can take advantage of Endpoint Manager and Intune and security and compliance, Azure Information Protection. There's a lot of different integrations in the cloud that as IT pros, you can lock down those devices, whether the users own them or, or your org owns them and keep things safe so that you don't run into a potential loss of revenue or worse. When we're working with organizations, we always recommend Windows 11 due to the enhancements in productivity. So users are now aware of how long it's going to take for the machine to restart if there's a Windows update. Or if they restart, they know that their applications will reappear. I have using Windows 11 since day one. I don't think of any other reason why not update Windows 11. Seriously, really, why not? Windows 11 is way faster and has a really nice UI design. If I try now go back to some old operating system, I feel I'm going backward. Sandy Zhang said it. Why not update to Windows 11? And why not take a closer look at all the great experiences we put together for Windows, Windows 365, Intune and Surface this week at Ignite. Visit aka.ms slash Windows at Ignite for a complete guide to sessions, labs, roundtables, and expert Q&A. Thanks for joining us today. On behalf of Steve and I, we hope you enjoyed the rest of Ignite.